The first credible Starlink alternative, Amazon Leo, is getting closer to consumer launch. Does Amazon have what it takes to take on Starlink's dominance? We're going to dive into what's up with Leo in this first part one of our end of year satellite industry update. Hi, I'm Chris of the Mobile Internet Resource Center here doing our kind of semi-annual update on the state of satellite internet. And this is a pretty exciting time because, well, for the last several years, it's been Starlink, 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 and a few maybe other interesting alternatives. But the most interesting alternative we've been tracking since all the way back in 2019, what we, was called Amazon's Project Kuiper, is actually getting closer to launch. So close that Amazon has actually given it a proper name. So Project Kuiper all along was the code name that Amazon was working with towards building its own Starlink competitive network, a big, massive uh, satellite constellation of over 3,000 satellites that was going to be designed to bring uh, consumer satellite broadband service, very similar to Starlink. Well, now that things are getting closer, Amazon has given Kuiper a name, and the name is... Amazon Leo. Now, Leo, not just because it's a ferocious lion, because Leo stands for Low Earth Orbit Satellites. So it, Leo is a Low Earth Orbit Satellite Constellation, just like Starlink. And just like Starlink, Leo will be can, dependent upon thousands of satellites connected together via laser links in space, bringing internet down to terminals on the ground. Now, Specific details of LEO have been sparse over the years. We've done many updates as things have percolated out, but now things are starting to get close. Amazon has launched the first 150 LEO satellites, and just here, just in time for the end of 2025, they have actually announced that they have the first customers on board. They have an enterprise pilot program, who, customers who are actually starting to test and use LEO. So real customers using it, real hardware, real satellites in space. When will this come to normal nomads like us? Is Amazon even going to target nomads like us? Well, now that there is an actual Amazon Leo webpage, well, the pictures on the webpage actually feature a van showing a movie out in the middle of nowhere talking about uh, Amazon Leo being a service ready to go everywhere. So yes, clearly they are targeting the mobile market, they will be targeting our VRs as well as business and enterprise markets. So what's up with Leo? First off, let's talk about the hardware. We know a lot about the hardware that Amazon is going to have for receiving Leo service. And along with the official name for the constellation, Amazon Leo, they've given the official names to their three terminals. So the three Amazon Leo terminals are Leo Nano, Leo Pro and Leo Ultra. So they've published a few specifications and photos of these and then an even more in detail um, preview video of Leo Ultra because that is what is now shipping to their select enterprise customers. So here is what we know about these terminals so far. Leo Nano is an ultra compact, what they call lower cost terminal that is just seven inch square. So very, very tiny doesn't have any moving parts, can just sit, and they should actually show it being used on a coffee table next to a camper, or a picnic table next to a camper, and it will connect to the LEO satellites in the sky above it. Weighs just 2.2 pounds, and Amazon says that it will be capable of speeds up to 100 megabits per second. So not blazing fast, but super small, presumably super power efficient. Um, so that's the, the LEO Nano. The next model is the Leo Pro, this is the everyday, average, typical consumer Leo. It is 11 by 11, so not too much difference in size than a laptop, a small little rectangle, capable of 400 megabits per second speed, so pretty darn fast. That's very comparable to what the, the best consumer Starlink uh, terminals are capable of right now, and weighs um, just 5.3 pounds. And back in uh, 2023, when Amazon talked about their production plans for this, they said that they'd be able to produce this terminal for less than $400, though we'll have to see what their actual retail price is when they try to come out into a market that is already saturated with things like Starlink Mini costing less than that. But that's the um, Leo Pro. And then the Leo Ultra, this is their kind of um, big boy enterprise um, receiver. It's a 20 by 30 inches, pretty big, pretty hefty at 43 pounds. 
and they've now published a video and some more detailed specs saying it is capable of um, one gigabit per second download speeds and 400 megabits per second upload speeds. Now, 400 megabit per second upload speeds is phenomenal for a satellite terminal. And even more impressive, uh, Amazon says that uh, the Leo Ultra is capable of full duplex operation. So doing one gigabit per second down and 400 megabits per second up simultaneously. Normal satellite receivers actually work they kind of divide their time between uplink and downlink. So using a lot of uplink slows your downlink and vice versa. So Leo Ultra, they're claiming it is the fastest uh, um, satellite terminal in production. So that is pretty big claims from Amazon. And they say this is in production now, the final design, and it is being tested by their new enterprise customers. So when will actual consumers get Leo service? Do you want to help keep this channel afloat? Well, you can do that by joining us over at the Mobile Internet Resource Center and become a member. And if membership is not for you, there's easier ways to support us. Just like, subscribe, comment, and share. Share our content, help get out to more people, and that keeps us floating and bringing more connectivity content to you. <laughs> for Amazon Leo to bring service to North America, to our, our, our typical consumer audience, you can't just have 150 satellites. They can't just place them over North America. The way low Earth orbit satellites work is they are constantly in motion through the sky. And if you want to have 24-7 coverage, which is pretty important for internet, you can't have satellites dropping out of view for several minutes at a time, waiting for the next one to come over the horizon. So you need to have enough satellites that you have that full 24-7 coverage. And according to Amazon's FCC filings, it's going to take about 578 LEO satellites before they're able to have kind of that baseline coverage over North America. So that's going to take a while, but Amazon is moving really, really fast. Now that they've got the, the designs finalized, they have a lot of launches booked beyond their initial 150 satellites they have right now. So they are saying, based on some of the, the comments they've made at industry forums, that they are, will have enough satellites in Q1 2026, so just in the next few months, to roll, uh, to roll out service in Canada, Germany, the UK, and the United States in Q1 2026. Now that is an incredibly aggressive timeline, requires a lot of launches and a lot of things to go right, but Amazon is putting the money into this. Going, going further beyond that, by the end of 2026, they hope to have service in 26 countries, um, global co coverage and 54 countries covered in 2027. So global coverage probably means over oceans and uh, uh, more uh, away from shoreline and in complete remote areas. So the laser intermesh is fully working there in uh, 2027. And then 2028, they're going to roll out to 100 countries and then start working on their next generation LEO constellation of another 3,200 additional satellites. So there's a lot of LEO satellites that are going to be launching in the not too distant future. And presumably in just a few months, we'll be starting to get details about what consumer LEO service might look like. Now, to get all of these satellites into orbit, Amazon has actually bought up almost all the launch capacity from every rocket provider in the world. You know, they've even been buying launches from their rival SpaceX um, to start getting uh, LEO satellites into orbit. So Amazon is going to be having launches on ULA, ULA Atlas V, SpaceX Falcon 9, ULA Vulcan Centaur, ESA, European Space Agency, Ariane 6 rockets, and then the big one, which is really kind of the future of LEO, is Blue Origin's new Glenn. So for those who aren't familiar with Blue Origin, that is a rocket company also um, founded and owned by Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon. So New Glenn is also trying to rival um, SpaceX and be the next generation of reusable launch providers. And well, New Glenn is just getting started, but they have just recently had their second successful flight and their first successful landing. So if this continues, New Glenn might be a reusable rocket that is a kind of a leap beyond SpaceX's Falcon 9, able to put more cargo into orbit with each launch than a Falcon 9 is. And this is where the future hope of um, Amazon Leo is that they'll be able to launch a whole lot of satellites on New Glenn at a much more economical cost than paying for all these other providers. So that is the future that Amazon is betting on. And it is going to be really interesting to see if they can pull it off because, well, 
you know, Amazon doesn't just have to build this constellation. They have to then make something that is appealing to the market that is already saturated and covered and um, dominated by SpaceX's Starlink. Will Amazon be able to do this? That is the big open question, but clearly they're willing to invest billions and billions of dollars. They know what SpaceX has done. They know what SpaceX is selling service for. They know what SpaceX terminals are capable of. So Amazon must be feeling pretty confident to continue to pour all these billions of dollars into this launch campaign and into this upcoming service. So we're very curious to see this space race actually heat up. Will Leo prove to be a true uh, Starlink competitor? We'll likely start to know in just the next few months and we'll be paying close attention here at the Mobile Internet Resource Center looking to get some real experience on does Leo measure up? Does it have some unique offerings versus Starlink? So exciting times ahead in the space race and well, of course, SpaceX and Starlink are not standing still either. So stay tuned for the next part two of our, in, and of our industry update. We'll dive into what's the latest with SpaceX and Starlink and what's up with all the other satellite internet providers and what are they doing in response to these two titans getting ready to clash it out. So stay tuned for part two. And if you're interested in this stuff, let us know. Are you excited about um, well, Project Kuiper, now Amazon Leo. Do you think this Leo is going to roar? Are you on Team Starlink? Are you just excited to see some competition? Let us know in the comments or come over and join us at the Mobile Internet Resource Center. We're eager to hear from you. Take care. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.